How's everybody doing today? It is January 27th, 2021. Um, we are going to go through some tabs here that I have open for you. Uh, some pretty important articles that I'd like to go over today and get this information out to you so you can share it with your family, friends, and uh, continue to get the truth out there the best that we can, okay? We're going to start here from CNET. Okay, this come out today. It says the doomsday clock remains at 100 seconds away from midnight apocalypse. I mean, you have to see how hard they are pushing this fear tactic right now. You're going to see it throughout what I'm talking about today. The more fear that they can push, the more that they're going to be able to take control. Okay, every single day taking a little bit more control a little bit more of your rights away etc etc okay and you're going to see that okay i'm going to show you but this says the bulletin of the atomic scientist warns that the world remains in a da in danger in 2021 hmm right i wonder why you know 20 you know 2021 agenda you know agenda this right okay and 2030 so, you know, we see what's coming. They've been showing us for a long time. But this says the doomsday clock. The name alone rings alarm bells. That's what they want, right? Scare you. The apocalyptic overtones are intentional. Yeah, we know. The clock is a symbol of just how close our planet is to disaster due to nuclear threats, <laughs> climate change, they're all over that right now, and dangerous techs. Says on Wednesday, the bulletin of the atomic scientists revealed that the that it's keeping the clock at the same time it set in 2020. It says, last year the Bolton gave the clock a pessimistic push, moving it from two minutes to midnight to a mere 100 seconds to midnight. After a disastrous 2020, the clock remains at that position. Okay, so when you see them pushing all this fear right here, you know, you can see the agenda, you can see the tactics, okay? Now check out some more of these tabs I want you to see, okay? Look at this, a couple hours ago it says, it's from ABC, it says, DHS uses the alert system for first time in a year to warn of domestic that threat, okay? These threat, domestic these threats, okay? Here we go again, right? When we all talked about it, when they were alerting everybody saying that, you know, every single state capital is going to be, you know, attacked. You're going to have people there that are going to be, you know, rioting, et cetera, et cetera, which really nothing happened pretty much. And, uh, and we all blew that out saying there's no way they would do this, okay? This is the same thing. They would not be doing this this way, okay? It says, using a federal system designed to warn all Americans about these threats, okay, to the U.S. homeland, the Department of Homeland Security has issued a warning that anger fueled by false narratives, especially unfounded claims about the 2020 presidential election, could lead some inside the country to launch attacks in the coming weeks. I mean, can you believe this, right? How They would never be saying stuff like this. I mean, you're literally building the story, showing the agenda, and literally, like, trying to antagonize somebody. You know, if you do have these type of people that are really wanting to go and do these attacks, they're pushing them to do that, okay? That's part of their plan. So let's see if we can get somebody to go do it, right? Oh, we'll tell them that there's a lot of people going to do it, so they'll go, you know, feeling safer. Um, but not only that, you know, they use it the other way. You know, they're saying that it's all because of us, right? false narratives all of us uh tinfoil hat wearing people right yeah check this out right here okay look this goes back to august 1st 2019 but i wanted to pull it up because it plays in perfectly with this with all of this fear that you're going to see okay they've been this is not something that happened over a year over five years ten years this has been going on you know decade after decade okay so but look, I just want to read a quick part of this. It says, exclusive, FBI document warns that these right here, okay, are a new domestic this threat, right? I've been telling you how they've been saying that now in the mainstream that we are, you know, domestic these, okay? You know, and when you start hearing them talk about this like that, this all comes full circle. You can see how every single part of this has been planned, including seeing this from all the way back to 2019, where they're already showing how this is the issue. We are the issue, the, you know, us so-called, you know, tinfoil hat wearing people, right? You know, 
It's because, look it, because we're doing what? Oh, we're fueling false narratives, which is not true. We do not do that. We show documentation. I know I do. I do not just talk here and not show my proof. Okay? So they say, when they're saying this, we know that it's just them coming after us. All right? So here, we'll keep going. Look at this. The borders tighten around the world as CV curfew fury spills over. Yeah, you have rioting going on in the Netherlands. You have, you know, protesting rioting going all over the world about different situations, whether if it's just restrictions or if it's a curfew or if it's a lockdown, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's, you know, them wanting you to go and roll up your sleeve or go and take the test, whatever it is, okay? You know, and it just, they're just pushing this. They're pushing the narrative that everything is about to, look at, you know, spill over. You know, it says border restrictions were being tightened around the world Monday in the face of an unrelenting CV threat. After a weekend in which anger and s at social distancing rules bubbled over into fiery clashes in the Netherlands, the United States was set to join France, Israel, and Sweden in pulling up the drawbridge to certain arrivals with the special concern about the new strains, here we go, new strains of the pathogen that originated in Britain and South Africa. This is what we were talking about, right? I told you how they would say like things are actually dropping off just a little bit, which they are. I'm going to show you that. But then they're going to use this second variant, okay? And things will probably go back up a good amount, which will allow them to do more lockdowns, curfews, restrictions, take more and more of your rights away, okay? Uh, also allows them to push more to implement uh, you know, the rolling, going and rolling up your sleeves, you know, they'll say that it's not mandatory, but when they completely take any option, you can go to go to work, travel on a bus, train, plane, leave your state, you're not gonna be able to do it, leave the country, you can't do that unless you're gonna be able to show proof, right? Yeah, it says, uh, it is up to us to show that we are civic-minded. <laughs> Uh, Claudio Barraza told AFP upon arrival at Paris's main international airport after the new rules on the test for the EU arrivals came into force. They like using these words. I talked about it, you know. Ugh. Says the stipulations came as Mexico's president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, came, became the latest public figure to test positive for the disease, and New Zealand reported its first community case in more than two months. And I talked about this in my live stream. Um, you know, yep, you have them now, have, you know, New Zealand coming out saying they have another case. So it just feels like they're, you know, everything's starting to just uh, build a little bit when it comes to the momentum behind this new variant coming in. All right. It says in Washington, President uh, Sleepy Joe will on Monday reimpose a ban of most non-U.S. citizens who have been in Britain, Brazil, Ireland, and much of Europe, as well as adding South Africa to the list, a senior White House official said. Says Sleepy Joe last week tightened mask wearing rules and ordered quarantine for those people flying into the country, which on Sunday topped 25 million cases. Cases, cases, cases. Okay, now we're going to go over something really quick, right? 25 million cases, right? Well, how many cases are there of the flu, right? Uh, each year on average, okay? Because they're saying that 25 million, they're pushing it there that it's so, so bad, right? That's so, so high. Um, now check this out from the same same people. You know, I've been showing this a few times because it just ties perfectly in. But they're talking here about how the flu cases are dramatically low this season. And we're not talking a little low. We are talking, you know, nothing, okay? And what what does it normally have? 45 million cases, okay? 45 million cases in about, you know, we'll say six months, but that, I don't even know if I would go that far. Usually it's a pretty good three, you know, three months, sec, you know, spot where it really, really picks up. But uh, we'll just use six months and say, so half a year, 45 million cases. 45 million, that's right. Well, how many this year? Only 925 as of the Jan January 13th, so I'm sure there's more. But my point is, is they just threw up a 25 million dollar or 25 million cases up there for CV, saying, "Oh, look how bad this is." When this is on average over, you know, almost double that. It just shows. It shows in the numbers what you can see, and you can do your own research and see this. Okay. It says, since it emerged in late 2019, CB19 has killed more than 2.1 million people with almost 99 million cases registered, according to an AFP tally from the official figures. Now, that's worldwide, they're saying. Okay, these are worldwide numbers. Um, it says, on Sunday, France started demanding a negative PCR test for arrivals by sea and air from European Union neighbors. 
you know, it says Sweden said it would prohibit entry from our neighboring Norway for three weeks after cases of more the infect the more infectious British strain were detected in Oslo. They're building. You feel the tension building? Do you you got to feel it, right? How they're like building it all up. But it's amazing how much they're contradicting themselves back and forth. You know, you have like right here, all right. Um, Ohio, they back. They're backing it down. California took away their lock, their stay-at-home orders, most of it, okay? Um, right here in Ohio, they're backing the curfew down. It says statewide curfew will move to 11 p.m. after hospitalizations decline. The curfew could be eliminated if, over the next few weeks, hospitalization numbers in the state fall below 2,500 over seven days. They just have these perfect numbers that they just make up, have it, you know, and, and how is this not so obvious that it's been planned, all right? Um, but And I love how they do this, too. They're acting like they're giving you something good here, right? Oh, well, we're going to take away a few hours of the curfew. You can stay out a little bit later. So, you know, look, we love you, right? Yeah. Now you break my legs. You offer me a crutch. Thank you so much. You know, we love you for sure. This is how they manipulate us, though, okay? You know, it says, uh, Governor Mike DeWine's office confirmed that Ohio's curfew will be shortened after a seventh straight day of CD19 hospitalizations fell below 3,500. Starting Thursday, the statewide curfew will be in effect from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. for at least two weeks. The governor's office says the new order will be issued Wednesday or Thursday. It says the restrictions could be eliminated if over the next few weeks, the numbers in hospitalizations in the state fall below 2,500 over seven days. You know, this is the thing. See how they always do this, though? How I tell you how they, they put the curfew in, and it's only supposed to be for a, a week or two. Then they extend it, extend it, they change it, they manipulate it. That's exactly what they did here. Look at the curfew, which started all the way back in November and has been extended multiple times. Prohibits people from being outside in their homes during those hours with multiple exceptions, including work, grocery shopping, medical appointments, and other necessary trips. It just, um, it's so obvious what's going on here, you know. But here, we'll go back to this real quick, this tab. Here's France, right? France is coming out today and saying that, look at France's curfew is not slowing CB19 infections enough, says a government spokesman. Hmm. When I see something like this, I think, okay, well, hold on. Where are you going with this? What is, you know, you're saying now that the, you know, the curfews that you put in weren't enough. It's not doing anything, right? It's not, it's not making a big enough dent in it. So what are they going to plan to do? What is the step up that they need to do? What restriction, lockdown, curfew, et cetera, et cetera, right? That has to now be implemented because that's, they don't come out saying something like this unless they're going to implement something to say, look at, we took care of it. Okay. It says, France's nightly curfew is failing to slow the spread of CV infections, and authorities are discussing the possibility of, hmm, tighter curbs, government spokesman Gabriel Attal said on Wednesday. And what do you know, does this say deaths? Nope. Cases again. Infections. Uh, it says, a curfew runs from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. every night. So that means t you only have 12 hours each day. You can be out. <laughs> it says, but uh, Macron is under pressure to impose, impose a third national lockdown since the crisis began almost a year ago, as data shows another increase in hospitalizations and deaths. The data shows that at this time, the curfew is not putting enough of, the break, of, a, enough of a break on the spread of the virus. So get ready, everybody. If you're in France, you better get ready because they're about to step it up big time, okay? You know, here's back in... Um, United States, okay? It says, Cooper extends the curfew as GOP questions CV19 rolling up your sleeve plan. It says, in North Carolina, it says, Governor Roy Cooper on Wednesday extended a trio of executive orders allowing for curbside alcohol sales, a halt to evictions, and a requirement for people to remain home at home from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. People, do you see everything that you're getting taken away from you? You know, everybody talked about martial law. Well, this, if you don't consider this a, a soft martial law, I guess you could kind of say it that way, um, you just aren't seeing it because it, it, that's what it is. They've taken your rights away. They're telling you whatever you got to do. They're putting curfews, restrictions, lockdowns, you know, et cetera, et cetera, people. It's there, right? It says North Carolina's modified stay-at-home directive that was set to expire on Friday will now remain in place until February 28th. Here we go again, right? So I always said, everybody's like, oh, Eric, they're just doing it for a week. Why can't you just buy in, do it, and if you do it right, we'll be okay. We'll get to go back to normal. Yeah, right, okay? And it never, ever just stops. It always gets extended every time. 
while the eviction moratorium will and allowance for the sale of to-go or delivery of mixed beverages remains in place to March 31st. I think that part that part was funny to me because how they made you know the sales of um, you know alcohol you know <laughs> to allow those to go you know look at allowing for curbside alcohol sales so that means you can sell it here 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 on the you know you, to go kind of funny huh hmm maybe they want their tax money right maybe they want their profits from that can't shut that down right it says uh, the Democratic governor's extensions come as a prominent state Republican expressed their frustrations over a new CV. Uh, rolling up your sleeve distribution strategy from Cooper's administration that critics argue has prioritized speed over equity. You know, this is, you're just seeing it everywhere, all right? One by one, you know. And I want to be sure, the last few tabs here, I want you to see how hard they're trying to divide us no matter what it is. Look at this. This comes out from two days ago. It says half of Chicago residents to get the CV19 rolling up their sleeves so far are white. I mean, can you believe this? They're going to use everything they can to divide us. Now they're going to use it even this way. Oh, yeah, well, look at all the white people are getting, you know, going, and they're allowed to roll up their sleeve and get their stuff done, but we're not. It is unbelievable how much they're trying to divide us, separate us, whether it's left versus right, Republican, Democrat, uh, you know, um, anti, rolling up your sleeve, roll up your sleeve, test, anti-test, you get my point, right? Black, white, it doesn't matter. Everything is about dividing us right now. You know, and here is what's going on over in the Netherlands. They're, they have been now rioting for three days because of the curfews over there, what they're doing. And it's, you know, it's nice to see people fighting back. Now, I don't ever promote, you know, violence, but my point is, at least they're standing up for themselves. You know, look, this says, uh, the Dutch police used tear gas, water cannon amid rioting over, the, over uh, CV curfew. It says, groups of youth confronted police in Dutch towns and cities Monday night, defying the country's CV curfew and throwing fireworks. Police in the port city of Rotterdam used a water cannon and tear gas in an attempt to disperse a crowd of rioters who also looted shops. This is happening everywhere. And see, when stuff like this is going on, this is playing right into their hand over there because you can see they're starting to use force, but then the next thing will, they'll be, you know, they'll, they'll be justified to do anything. It doesn't matter what it is, they'll be justified to take it to the mean, you know, whatever means necessary. And they'll have the backing of the masses in their country because they've pushed this narrative and this agenda, right? You know, it says police and local media reported trouble in the capital of Amsterdam, where at least eight people were arrested. Harlem, where uh, vandals set a large fire in a street, the hog and other towns before and after 9 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. curfew began. Okay, so look at, they're saying where the eight people was arrested. Hmm, check this out. Eight people, huh? Yeah, not anymore the next day. Look at that. 200 people, you know, and it's just, it's continuing. It's getting more and more and more. Um, they're just standing up for themselves. It's nice to see this, um, you know. They, they, you can't just continue to back up, you know. You you push somebody into a corner over and over and over again, and you put somebody in a corner that has a family, that has, you know, has children, etc. Eventually, they're going to bite back. You just cannot do that, you know. And I thought this, I wanted to throw this in here too because I thought this was interesting. It's from the Post, it's from today. It says, a Georgia GOP lawmaker refused CV tests. He was kicked off the floor for jeopardizing the health of colleagues. You know, this all ties in with them being able to say that you and I are um, an actual uh, threat because we will not, you know, take these tests, go and roll up our sleeves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that we're, you know, by doing that, we're spreading a false narrative. And by doing that, you know, we become a massive problem, which, you know, when they are talking about us being, you know, these right here, even all the way back in 2019, and now you're hearing it all the time with their terminology saying that, you know, we, you know, aluminum, you know, tinfoil hat wearing people, we are uh, definitely these domestic those, okay? And here's one of the last article, and I'll cut this off, okay? But check this out. Pharmacist charged in CD19 roll up your sleeve case to plead guilty. It says, a Wisconsin pharmacist accused of trying to spoil dozens of vials of the CV19 that is facing 20 years in prison after he agreed Tuesday to plead guilty in a federal court. Wow, right? 
these stories right here. Is it true or not? It does not matter. The point is, this is mainstream news setting you up. These are the stories that will set precedents. They will use these exact types of things right here to say, this is why we need to take away everything from you because we can't trust even our own pharmacists because these people are so misinformed and they're such a problem. They're domestic, mm -hmm, those, right? And, you know, they're a threat. And because we are all becoming a threat, it will open up a door for them to allow, you know, them to come and do pretty much whatever they want. All right, so I will leave uh, the links to all of these in the description. And I just want to tell you all thank you for supporting my channel and just always leaving comments, emailing me, and uh, all your prayers, everything. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I hope all of you have a great night. And I um, just ask that you please pray. Uh, pray against this every single day. This is a battle of good versus evil. So I, you know, I implore you to please pray ask for you know your strength in your you know direction what you need to do and um, if you have not already become saved please hit your knees ask for forgiveness i promise you will never forgive you'll never you know you'll never regret it ever um having your faith having you know that in your corner at all times when you just know it um it, it will get you through all these times okay there's no way I could get through what I do without my faith. It just would never happen. So I really hope that all of you um, have that. And um, I hope you continue to pray, continue to have no fear. We fear no man. We only fear God, okay? So um, I love you all. Stay safe. Stay strong. No fear, no panic. We'll talk to you soon. God bless.